In a previous video I talked about sensitivity labels and how you can set that up in your tenant. Here I go to the compliance admin console, you go through create a couple of labels um, and then publish those and make them available to people. But how does it work for your users, for your team members? How do they use and interact with these labels? Well, it's quite easy actually because by default in Outlook, um, or Word, they're going to be now presented to you. Now, you might see this little icon here. Um, if we zoom in on that, and it can show you talk about sensitivity labels. Or in the case of Outlook here, and this is the same thing in the new, um, the new Outlook, slightly different in um, other versions of Outlook, you'll see these labels. And you'll see that it's very... Uh, conveniently included color codes plus if I hover over it it'll give me information about what each label is about so by default in our um, environment we'll set it up to say everything is general unless otherwise specified so I'm going to go down here I'm going to change it to personal um, and I'm going to have to please explain why I'm changing it down um, so in this case, I'm going to just say previous label was incorrect. I'm going to change that. And it's going to log the fact that I've changed that email to now being a personal label. You can see the color codes changed. I can send that off um, to someone else and it's going to keep that or track that label. Right? And then when people reply to that, it can then reapply that same label within our environment. They might have different labels. It removes that as part of that process. But it, we've now got a classification scheme. So anyone else who sees that label be it an internal person, or if they have access as a delegate to my mailbox, they're able to see that label, understand that it was a personal email. Please don't, you know, please be sensible around how you manage that. It's that easy. That's all there really is to labels from Outlook. Now, over here on Word, I've got another document. Now, I've got Copilot. So Copilot's going to give me options to start uh, writing and drafting. That's a story for another conversation. Um, so we're going to just say, actually, I'm going to use this one as an example. Um, draft a letter to my um, lawyer about a possible merger. Now generate that, and it's going to start generating. But whilst um, Copilot's going off and doing some um, stuff for me, you'll see that there's a sensitivity label up here. Now, if you've turned sensitivity labels on in your environment, this will be new. Um, and you'll see uh, Copilot's busy going and drafting that letter for me. So if you don't have Copilot, go and investigate it. Very cool. Right. So now I can again do my sensitivity. Now, you'll see that Word in this particular case doesn't have the color codes, but it still helpfully tells me what each one of these labels are. So because this is a highly confidential document, keep that, I'm gonna flag it as highly confidential. Now, what is going to happen is it's flagged that as highly confidential, um, so in my sensitivity, meaning that it's gonna put certain restrictions on this document. Um, now, it hasn't actually done it, but it will provide a, um, in our case, a sensitivity label and a watermark associated with that. And we can also encrypt. That's what we set up in the rules in a previous video. And that's really all there is to it. Sensitivity labels, you just get people to say what type of content it is, pick the appropriate label, and then move on. Don't think about it. But there's one more thing that we can talk about. And that is with groups. So I'm just going to go to our um, home page. So this is our internet, our systems hub, um, which is another conversation. Now you can see that we've got a sensitivity label up here. Right? So we can actually apply a sensitivity label to the content on, that's on here. So I'm describing this as general. And if I click on this, it's going to tell me... Um, more about what general means, I'm hoping. No, but it means that any content that's shared in here, automatically, if it doesn't have a label, it will be assigned a general tag. So that includes any videos, any PDF documents, or anything else. So imagine if you had this general label for 
board documents, for example, you could define those as any documents that's loaded up into there as highly sensitive. You could even have a specific label for board document, which might include requirements for encryption and other controls around that. So these controls can be used by your administrator um, to manage and monitor sensitive or non-sensitive documents and help provide guidance to your team as to what can be done with that document. If I see a document with public, I can share away. If I see a, a, a document with highly sensitive or highly confidential, I'm going to be a little bit more circumspect in terms of who I share that information for. Really, that's all sensitivity labels are about. It's about providing guidance to your team to understand what you can or, or cannot do with that document and whether or not it needs to be managed carefully. Now, those sensitivity labels can also be used for other things, such as controlling access, right? So even if that file goes into a public area, you can block the ability for that document to be reshared. Um, externally, even if it as a public uh, site, you can share with anyone externally. But a sensitive document or a highly sensitive document is restricted from those permissions. But it just gives you that little bit more control over what sort of content can go where. So I hope you found that useful. Um, like, subscribe, you know the deal. Uh, drop your comments in and let me know what you think about sensitivity labels and whether or not they can be helpful in your business.